You want to tell them? <laughs> uh, it's about not my good. Not my good news, okay? It's really bad. Oh, man, guys. What am I? I don't even understand how. How I, does this happen? I thought I was being considerate. He left one Oreo in the in the package, okay? So as you're eating the Oreos, <laughs> you leave an entire one last serving. So in what, my opinion, what's a serving? four to five cookies. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, we, we, we want to foster honesty here. So okay, in let's, my opinion, okay. four to five cookies. Then on. here's the dilemma, though. When I went to get Oreos, there were three. Then a babysitter ate some because <laughs> I wouldn't have left three. <laughs> and I ate two and left one for you. <laughs> how, how very reasonable of you to only eat two. Okay, so anyway, I came here and <laughs> there's one chocolate chip cookie. And I thought to myself, I'm going to be okay. I know I still have Oreos. I know I still have a fair number of Oreos. To complete the cookie experience. If I'm going to have a cookie experience, I'm going to have a cookie experience. This is making me look like a very gluttonous cookie eater. I ate the Oreos like a week ago. <laughs> to be clear. And I ate the chocolate chip cookies tonight. <laughs> <laughs> so, okay. So I have this in my mind. I've got the one here. So I go over to get the Oreo package and I pick it up. And it's lighter than I anticipated. Why would it be lighter? Oh no, I shake it. Oh no, this is not sounding hopeful. How many cookies are, you un unsticker the front top? <laughs> this might be the biggest conflict of our marriage. One <laughs> cookie, I thought. This could be really bad case scenario, like two to three mm. cookies in here. No, it was worst case scenario. One cookie. My bad. I'm, I'm sorry. Next time, I will leave you four to five cookies. And or, as... Actually, next time, I'll just eat them all. Yes, that is truly better. <laughs> As you are eating the package of Oreos, you have to eat them in pedagogy. Pedagogy. Pedagogy, meaning like... Not everybody knows the, how we're using The that. cadence at which you teach so that you're teaching your content in the amount of time you have. You have to have good pedagogy, okay? It's like methodology. Is yeah. it? Okay. Methodology? I thought it was more about pacing yourself with your content. No, no. Uh, content. Yeah, that too. Well, we mostly, in our 12 years of marriage, we mostly use it in refer reference to yogurt. <laughs> and <laughs> yogurt with jelly. Like, you know, the little fruit jelly. The method and practice of teaching, especially as an academic subject or theoretical concept. So this Wait. makes a whole lot of sense when you apply it to yogurt, yogurt because it's the method and practice of dipping the yogurt in the goodies, whatever the goodies are. <laughs> I used to have Oreo yogurt. Goodness. Or or like you have the fruit, <coughs> fruit, um, <coughs> jelly, fruit on the side, Chobani or something. Yeah. And you like the we describe use the word pedagogy to refer to how much. A proper jelly you get on each yes. spoonful. And if you use good pedagogy, your last spoonful is the same as your first spoonful. Or at least you have any jelly left. Oh, true, true, true. <laughs> any or jelly you get left. like a whole I heap did, That's what I try to do. <laughs> I try to do that. with, And I also try to do that with pizza Lunchables. You do a tiny bit of cheese on the first two pizzas and then... Boatload on the last one. So that's like the opposite of pedagogy. But Do you want to tell them what you did this week? You just got home? I just got home. So we're kidding about the tragedy of the cookie, by the way. <laughs> we have a lot, a lot of big and weighty things in our life right now. Mm. 
And so the laughing com- about cookies is like it's, medicine for the soul. I just wanted to get that out there before going too much further. Like you wanted to establish that the genre of that first five minutes was satire. Correct. <laughs> So, um, I have the privilege of being a one-on-one team at our church's VBS, and I was a one-on-one team with someone who is amazing, incredible, special, talented, brilliant, fun, hilarious, witty, incredible. She also experiences visual and hearing difficulties. And so part of the teamwork this week was, I was learning, basically, I was learning how to look at like what was happening that evening and try to find different ways to make it as accessible as possible. And so it was incredible. It was such a life-giving experience. Like it is 9.30 right now and I'm not tired. I'm jazzed. Like I'm, it's just like so life-giving for me. I love doing that and I love being with those people. Mary is so in her element this week doing that and just working with kiddos in general and the hype and all of that. And I got to like, we, a couple days or maybe just one day, um, she brought the kids to church and- Our babies to yeah, church. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And I was still working at the church. And so we kind of like, she passed off our kiddos and, but I hung around and like, saw her doing her thing and it was really fun to watch like the opening exciting song yeah yeah it was a really really cool week and it made me realize like oh i want to do this more Mm -hmm. and probably with other kiddos at church as well Mm -hmm. with different needs and i'm just so excited i love I love seeing creativity in bringing accessibility. Yeah. I love it. Our, our church has a buddy ministry for kids with special needs. And that was one of the things that when we were looking for where God was calling me for my next job as a pastor, this is one of the things we loved about this and do yeah. love about this church. Yeah. And so it's, cool. it's fun for that Mary gets to take part in that. I have a feeling that part of what it is, is that I've experienced, like having cystic fibrosis, Mm -hmm. there were times where things, where my body couldn't participate the same way that everybody else could. Like things come to mind like- um, Summer camp? Oh. Yes, summer camp. Summer camp had to be different. Like, I literally stayed in the nurse's cabin for summer camp. But um, but even just, like, at youth group or something, if they were playing some ball game that was – or, like, dodgeball or something, I had to think about the fact that if that hits me in the abdomen and it ruptures my enlarged spleen, not great. Not a great plan. You know, just, like, Mm -hmm. I think – I think I have a little, like a lens for that sort of thinking, like figuring out a way to be a part of something that you can't be a part of the same way as everybody else, but you can still enjoy it. And Um, I think you have a deep empathy for feeling like maybe like you don't fit in. Yeah. And like, it's different for different people like why that is but you know right like whether you're you were on ivs and couldn't do an activity or that sort of thing like you've experienced that and so you can empathize with okay this moment right here might be hard so how can we make the most of it or acknowledge that it's hard even just acknowledging that it's hard like yeah 
It's okay if there's not like a quick fix, but just being like, yeah, that is really, really hard. So that's what I've been doing this week. And the other thing I've been doing this week. Uh, oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. I forgot about that. That's my best description. <laughs> that's going to be the intro. <laughs> <laughs> it's okay. They know me. Mm -hmm. They get it. You guys get it. Right. Well, you got to tell them okay. why they get it. My port is, I'm going to, let's do um, percentage guesses on okay. what percentage do you think this port is a goner? Oh, that's interesting. I'm going to say 75% goner. I'm going to go 85%. <laughs> I... I think, well, we thought it was a goner. What, 18 six? months ago. Oh, it was 18 it months? It was before Elijah was born. No. Correct. Wait, no, no, no. But, okay, that time. But then this happened again. Yes, the stiff thing. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yes, it happened again. I forgot about that that time. Because I was like, wait, you were at the hospital getting a poor study and I was watching a lot of Yeah, I was trying to remember when that was. Six or nine months ago, maybe a year ago. Yeah, but to so be fair. 18 like months I, ago, a year ago, two weeks ago, and now. Yeah. To, to be, be fair. fair that we, we made it this far with something we thought was a goner a year and a half ago. So Yeah, so I think this one's about six years old. Mm. Is that right? Let's see. No, maybe it, a little more. It was 2000. Yeah, it was 2017, I think. So, six, six and a half. Nine. Yeah. So, yeah, 18 months ago when it wasn't working. Oh, I can't even remember. No, I don't remember. I don't remember what it was doing then. I know when we did the port study, it was really, really stiff. Six months or a year ago. It has been really stiff. We did TPA in it uh, six months, a year ago. I don't know when. Yeah. And then yeah. here we are. It is just not working. So either we're going to go. So basically, I was able to get care for both children. So Peter can come with me. Miraculous. I was not expecting that. I thought I was going to go alone. And part of me is thinking I should just go alone because I'm afraid that if you go with me, it'll allow me to freak out. Like I feel comfortable with you. Yeah, no, I think I think maybe you should go alone. Oh, okay. I'll come with you. No, I'm just saying, like, you've been going all over town by yourself the last couple months and you're rocking it. So I'm like, go do a port study without me. But they did say to bring a driver. Okay. But that's but in the that's... context of, they said come fasting and with a driver. Because in interventional radiology, they have the tools, which makes me about shiver, to dig it out of your chest while you're awake and laying there. No, I'm not kidding. If you were asking that, because I'm not kidding. It's fine i have friends who have done it awake and they're like it's fine it's not for me but mary's got a surgeon yes we already so basically like my surgeon has already given me the or dates that are available because she said that she could remove this one that's been in here half a decade or more and let's let's be clear if people haven't been around long or like know the backstory on this port I mean, there is a pro to this scenario, and that is getting a new port in a better location. Are you guys ready to see where it is? It's in my armpit, basically. It's right here. So, like, armpit, port. Not Which, great. I, I, I feel like it's a subjective. Port placement is probably subjective. Yeah. Some people might like it there. Yeah, and some people where my old one was right here, in the almost in the middle of my chest, um, some people think that that's weird. It was incredible for over 10 years. It was the best port. There you have it, folks. So tomorrow I'm going for the port study. The port study will tell us 
if it's a goner or not, or if it just needs TPA or something, but we can't even get saline in it. I don't think we're gonna be able to get TPA in it. I'm just preparing my mind for that. And then, you know, 10 a.m. port study, and then I'm hoping by 11 a.m. I'll know the answer. So I'll be able to get back to my surgeon and then start the plans for childcare, for surgery day and the days following because when you dig something out of your chest that's been there for six years, you feel it. They say you might be sore. It's so, it's more than that. Yeah. So it's not terrible, but it's not great. And so um, anyway, okay, Peter's finishing editing. But the nice thing is the surgeon has OR time, possibly like the around the 4th of July. So I can kind of take off work and think the timing will work out but maybe it'll work tomorrow it might work it might, it work. might surprise it us might work. okay guys thanks for hanging out we'll see you tomorrow at the hospital ah Stop.